माय नेम इज रामाकृष्णा आई एम ए फिजियोथेरपी स्टूडेंट माय क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज द नीड ऑफ अल्लाह टू क्रिएट एडम एंड यू एंड दिस टोटल यूनिवर्स व्हाट ही विल गेट फ्रॉम दिस एंड माय सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज एवरीथिंग इज क्रिएटेड बाय समवन सो इवन गॉड मस्ट हैव बीन क्रिएटेड बाय समवन व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अल्लाह ब्रदर्स आर थ्री क्वेश्चंस द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाई डिड गॉड क्रिएट एडम एंड ईव एंड व्हाट वाज हिज रीजन टू क्रिएट ऑल दिस वर्ल्ड एंड ह्यूमन काइंड Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and Eve may peace be upon them both so that the human kind could come they were the great great grandparents Allah says in surah hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min zakrin wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila litarafu inna karamakum min dallahi yatqakum inna la alimun khabir oh human kind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of almighty god is the person who has taqwa the criteria to judge any human being it is not wealth it's not color it's not caste it's not creed it is taqwa it is god consciousness it is righteousness it is piety so adam and eve peace be upon them both they were our great great grandparents of yours also and of mine also all human kind therefore i call you a brother we are brothers in humanity Allah says ya you are nas o human kind and Allah says in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 70 wala qad karramna bani adama almighty god has honored all the children of adam whether they are born in india usa uk born in a hindu family or a muslim family or a christian family allah says he has honored all the bani adam if you are a human being allah has honored you whether your name is zakir abdullah ramu shankar If you are born as a human being, Allah has honored you. Now coming to the question, why has Almighty God created the human beings? Allah has created the human beings because Allah says this is one of His best creation. All the other creations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they obey Him. We have the angels. Whatever Almighty God says, the angels obey Him directly. They have no free will. The human being is the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which has a free will. We can either obey Him or disobey Him. So Allah has created such a creation. We are one of His best creation, in the best of forms. But we have a choice of either obeying God or disobeying God. If we obey God, we will go to Jannah. We will go to Swarg. We will go to heaven. If we disobey Him, we will go to hell. We will go to Narak. So this is the test for the hereafter. Allah says in Surah Mulk, chapter number sixty-seven, verse number two: "Al Lazi Khalak Al Maut Wal Hayata." It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life is a test for the hereafter. So Allah has created the human beings, and Allah says in Surah Dariyat, chapter number fifty-one, verse number fifty-six: "Wa Ma Khalak Tul Jinna Wal Insa Illa Li Abdoon." That we have created the jinn and the men not but to worship Him. So we supposed to worship, obey the commandment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is the different creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which has the free will of even going against Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or obeying Him. All the other things, the stars, the trees, the mountains, the Quran says they do such that to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they prostrate to Him, they obey Him. We have a free will. Now, when Allah has given a free will, with the free will, if we obey Him, we become higher than the angels. with the free will if we disobey him we become the partners of the devil so he's created us for the test for the hereafter come to your second question everything has a creator who created god if anyone says everything has a creator it is a wrong statement every created thing has a creator the definition of god is he is uncreated the moment you say who created god he is not god The definition of God is He is uncreated. Suppose a person comes and asks you, "That brother, my friend John, he was admitted in the hospital. He gave birth to a child. Can you guess? Was it a girl or a boy? Can you guess? Try it out. Guess? Can't guess. Why? Can you on the microphone? Can you guess? Was it a girl or a boy? Huh? See, brother John, he was admitted in the hospital. He gave birth to a child. Was it a girl or a boy? Can you guess? A fifty fifty percent chance, girl or boy? People are laughing. Why? Can you guess? Can't guess. Why? 
Even if you guess, can you get the answer right? Achha, can you guess? I'll give you two chances. Was it a girl or a boy? <laughs> Try and out. Girl. girl. <laughs> Brother, can a man give birth to a child? <laughs> ah, there you made a mistake. Same way you made a mistake by asking who created God. A man cannot give birth to a child. So where's the question of it being girl or a boy? See, now you understood. <laughs> ah, now that's good, brother. So it was a man cannot give birth to a child. So where's the question of a girl or a boy? So when you're asking who created God, God by definition, Allah by definition is uncreated. The moment you say who created Allah, he's not Allah. There's nothing like him. Coming to your last part of the question, who is Allah? Who is Allah? The best definition I can give you is quote to you Surah Ikhlas. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. It's mentioned in the Quran, Kul ho Allah ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah is Samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kuffan ad. There is nothing like him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any human being, any person says so and so candidate is God. If that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. Four line definition. This is the litmus test for theology, for the study of God. First is, Qul hu Allah ahad. Say is Allah and only. Allah is Samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yulad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kuffa anad. There is nothing like him. If you go to the Hindu scriptures, the same is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Qul wa Allah ahad is mentioned if you read Chandogya Upanishad. Chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. Second test. Allah is Samad. Allah the absolute eternal. Bhagavad Gita chapter number 10 verse number 3 says, I am known as the Lord of all the worlds, the unbegotten, the beginningless. Third test, Lam yulad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. It's mentioned in the Shrita Shatara Upanishad. Chapter number 6 verse number 9. Na chas ye kasij, janita na chadipa. Of him there are no lords. He has got no parents. Almighty God has got no father. He has got no mother. And Walam Yakulla Ukufanad, there's nothing like him, is mentioned in Shweta Shatar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, where it says, Nathasya Patima Asti. Of that God, there is no Pratima, there is no idol, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no sculpture. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Same as Walam Yakulla Ukufanad. So any person saying so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. For example, some people say, Bhagawan Rajneesh is Almighty God. Once during question answer time, a Hindu told me, we don't believe Bhagawan Rajneesh to be God. I never said that the Hindus believe Bhagawan Rajneesh is God. I said some people believe Bhagawan Rajneesh to be God. Let us put this Rajneesh to test. First test is, Kul Huallahu Ahad. Say he's Allah one and only. Was Rajneesh one and only? Was he the only man who claimed divinity? There are hundreds of them. And in this country, we have thousands of men who have claimed divinity. He's not the only one. But Rajneesh Bhakti said, no, no, he's unique. Let's go to the next test. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Was Rajneesh absolute and eternal? We know from his biography, from his autobiography, he was suffering from asthma, from diabetes, from chronic backache. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, diabetes, chronic backache. Third test, Lam Yulid Valam Yulad. He begets not noise begotten. Bhagavan Rajnish was born in Madhya Pradesh. He had a father and mother. In 1981, he goes to America, USA. And he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. In the state of Oregon, he starts his center and calls it as Rajnish Puram, his village. Later on, the American government arrests him and put him behind bar. Rajnish says, the American government slow poisoned me. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. In 1985, the American government kicked him out of the country, he comes back to India, in the same city, Pune, and he goes back to his center, which is now called as Osho Commune. And if you go to the Samadhi of Rajnish, it is mentioned there on the Samadhi, Bhagwan Rajnish, Osho, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, to the 19th of January, 1990. Never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, 
to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention his samadhi. He was not given visas to 21 countries of the world. <laughs> Almighty God coming in this world to visit the world and requires visas to go to different countries. And the Archbishop of Greece said, if you don't remove Rajneesh out of this country, we'll burn his house and the house of his disciples. And the last test, is so stringent that no one besides the true almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare God to anything, he's not God. We know Rajneesh, like the human beings, had a beard, one nose, two eyes, two ears, two hands. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he's not God. If someone says, Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Anand Swashnigar. Might have heard the name of Anand Swashnigar. Have you heard Anand Swashnigar? The person who got the title Mr. World, Mr. Universe. The strongest man in the world, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anyone, whether it be Anand Swashnigar, whether it be Dara Singh, whether it be King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There's nothing like him. So this is a four-line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given in the Quran. Whichever God you're worshipping, brother, put that God to the test of surah class. If that God passes, that is a true God. Otherwise, it's a fake God.